All right, so today we're gonna to start adding color to our neurographic art. Um, we did our lines and we rounded all our corners. So now we're gonna add color and we can add color with watercolor. So if you're able to do watercolor, that's what my preference would be for this project. I think watercolor would be really outstanding and really help with the abstract art we're going on with it because I want to teach you a couple different things. However, if for some reason you don't have your art kit home with your watercolor set in it or you're not at a space where you can paint with us during the live, that's fine. Or you're just anti-watercolor for some reason, which I've never met too many people that way, um, you could use colored pencils. And I will show you at the end how I expect you to use colored pencils. It would be a lot of blending and really trying to show me depth with that watercolor, with the colored pencils. So I really think watercolors is be your best bet. So if you are more interested in colored pencils, stick around to the very end, or you can fast forward through all the watercolor nonsense and learn how I want you to do with this colored pencils. Most of us though, watercolors. So in your kit, you should have a green paintbrush that looks pretty new, hopefully. Um, you might have a smaller blue brush with a yellow tip. I think you really want to use this green one because you have a nice big space. That smaller one would be great if you're getting a tiny little detail areas. Um, so you might have both, but I recommend using your green paintbrush. You'll need some sort of cup to put water and paint in. So not a drinking cup. Don't go in your cabinet and get out a coffee mug or something. Ask what you can use. A disposable cup works really well. Um, something like that. And then you'll need your paint set from class um, or from your art kit. You also would be helpful to probably have a piece of paper towel around to help you blot any messes and to dry your um, paintbrush as well. Now we haven't watercolored together since fifth grade and it was a long time. So a few things to remember with watercolor you you want to use a lot of water it shouldn't be dry it shouldn't be sticky the paints will get sticky but your painting shouldn't be sticky um this is going to seem really basic but we're going to go over the colors here um you obviously have your warm colors your red orange yellow green blue it's pretty obvious but these three get a lot of confusion it's then purple magenta which is a pinky purple and a turquoise blue. I took out all the blacks and browns before school even started. That was fun to do of 300 watercolor sets, but there's no black and brown in there. So we wanna keep this nice bright colors. And I am not gonna make you choose complimentary colors or warm colors or cool colors. I want you to choose whatever colors speak to you. So you can really do it your way. When you're using watercolor, it's really important you have a wet brush, you hold your paintbrush just like you'd hold a pencil, really dancing on the tippy toe of your paintbrush because dancers dance on their tippy toes, not on their bottoms, usually. Um, when we are getting our paintbrush wet, you want to really swish it around, drip off the extra, and then kind of just wiggle it around in the paint. You don't need to scoop it. We're not, we're not having chips and salsa here. We're just kind of wiggling around. So I'm going to start with some orange because for some reason that really speaks to me right now. And I'm just going to wiggle around an orange a couple times. Lots of water on my paintbrush, and I'm going to pick a section. I'm just going to randomly start painting. I'm going to pick a section, and I really like orange, so I want that to be when I focus. So you should be holding your paintbrush so you have control over it, and it should have lots of water. So when you're putting wet paint on dry paper, it kind of stays where you put it, which is great. If you want it darker, get a little bit more paint, and you can paint it darker. If you want it lighter, you need to add more water, and if it gets too dark and watery, you can use your paintbrush, your paper towel and blot it. So if you want to do two colors that kind of blend together, wet color next to wet color blends, or you can kind of force it. So you can take a clean paintbrush with clean water and paint just clean water in that section and when you paint close to that orange already there, it's gonna start bleeding in there and it's gonna pull that down and soften it a little bit. But now that the paper's wet, I can go and add another color and it really gives me control over where it goes. I can kind of move it around, kind of like pushing around in jello <laughs> and really control where it goes. So see the color in water kind of explodes and moves. So it kind of really depends on what you like. I'm gonna let you explore a lot with the watercolor, this painting. So again, I like how that looks, I'm gonna let that dry. I could keep adding color to darken edges because I like darker edges and lighter middles, but that's me. 
Some people are different. And when it's wet, it's going to kind of spread and do its own thing, which is very cool. If you don't like that, you're more controlling and you want to tell it where it goes, let it dry. And then you can darken it underneath it. Because if you put wet paint on dry color, it actually stays put better, if that makes sense. Um, if things are moving around where you don't want them to because you have too much water, you can kind of use your drier paintbrush and kind of force that around. So I kind of like the way that looks. And move on to a different section. And we are painting it section by section. We're not just randomly painting the whole thing because we want to use different techniques. So I'm going to do uh, different colors down here. Maybe I'm going to do some yellow. And I'm going to, again, I kept the paper dry. I'm going to use lots of water. So there's a lot of dipping and swirling and holding it like a pencil, dancing on the tippy toe of your ballet shoe. Okay. And once I get that color, I can decide maybe I don't like that color or maybe you'll want to mix a little orange in there. So now that it's wet, I can drop in some orange color and see that kind of has a mind of its own and moves. And then I can take my clean paintbrush and really kind of play with that and make it more swirled and tie dyed. And I really like the way that looks. So I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me paint all my things because it's going to take a while. So this is what we're going to do in class today. And I know the colors aren't as vibrant on my camera as they're probably in real life. So you're going to paint a few sections and we're just going to get used to painting and decide what you like. Do you like a wet on wet look? Do you like um, wet on the dry paper? Try to see. I really like the darker edges. I just really like when the paper kind of takes hold and just kind of explodes out. That's one of my favorite things about watercolor. Um, but I get those people who like control a little bit more. It's going to be a little difficult for you. So try to have interest and see what happens when you mix colors together. Remember when you mix warm and cool colors, sometimes it turns more brown. So you want to be more conscious of that. Um, so just start painting. So that's the painting part of it. And we'll be with that in our life. If you are a friend who, for some reason, isn't allowed to paint, doesn't have a space to paint, just really, really does not like watercolor for some reason, I will let you do this project with color pencil but it's going to be a challenge. So if you have color pencil and I have just a 12 pack of colors, I'm going to take out some colors and you'll have to have a pencil sharpener. Electric pencil sharpeners sometimes can eat these pretty well. So you need more a handheld pencil sharpener. So I'm just going to use the same three colors I used here just to show you. And I want you to blend. So with colored pencils, now that we're in middle school, we don't just color and scribble. We don't scribble scrabble. So starting with your lightest color, you can even hold it on the side of your paint, your paintbrush, your color pencil. You want nice, smooth coloring. And so I'm going to start with the yellow. And I want to see light colors going into darker colors. So since yellow is my lightest color, I can color this whole thing in watching, being mindful of my edges. And I'm going to try to color the whole thing nice and yellow and then color out a little bit yellow to the edges. And I know this isn't super exciting to watch Mrs. Cole do this, but we don't want it just like that. That's not okay. There's some scribbling in there, but I'm gonna take my lighter hue and orange is a little bit lighter than red. So I'm gonna go with orange and I'm just gonna start lightly coloring into my yellow. Keeping my direction going all in the same direction. You don't want to keep mixing up your directions because then it doesn't look as nice. Color pencil is not as forgiving as like crayon is sometimes. So then I'm going to bring my orange out a little bit darker. I'm going to start light and color darker. Sometimes coloring in a circle kind of helps you smooth in all those areas. All right, so I'm putting more pressure on as I get towards the opposite side of the yellow and I'm going lighter pressure as I get towards that yellow part. So I'm gonna go back to my yellow and then I'm gonna blend some more and I'm gonna kind of use that blending motion. You can use erasers with color pencils. It does help a little bit with it. This is gonna be tedious, I'm not gonna lie. Using color pencils to my expectations of blending is gonna be a little much. 
So then you're gonna take your red and you're gonna finish it with the red. So you can start with the darker areas at the very edge. And then color it into the orange to blend it lighter. And you can go darker. It's easier to go darker than it is to go lighter. So build up that color slowly, not using a ton of pressure because you can always darken it it's harder to lighten it. So eighth grade had a crash course in color pencil blending this year too. So your goal when you're blending is you don't want to see a lot of your pencil lines. So sometimes you have to go back and really kind of go color over things to blend it out and smooth it out. I feel like I could have a little bit more something done here. The yellow to orange is a pretty big jump. Just do your best, but you get the picture. So each section needs to be blended with at least two or three colors. It has that blending kind of look to it, going from light to dark. So it's your choice. I'm gonna get rid of this puddle here, it's driving me nuts. Um, choose your own adventure. You can paint using a couple different colors in each section, or you can use colored pencils and do some blending. I expect both to be really neat and high craftsmanship because um, we really want to focus and be intentional during this. Because remember, this is a mindfulness project. I do not expect this to be all colored today. That's a lot, even for me to sit here and do. And if we were in class, even with a whole 50 minutes, we would never finish this in one class period. So we're going to paint a good chunk of this today. I would say spend about 30 minutes, 30 solid minutes, and you'll have at least 20 with me in class in the live. Then I'd ask for another maybe 10 to 20 minutes outside of class to work on this and get as far as you can and then stop. Let it dry completely and then we'll bring that back to with us on Thursday. If you have any questions, I'll be in the live class. I can answer them tomorrow or email me and I'll talk to you later. Bye guys.